What is going on, everybody? Big Ten football schedule release day. Um, there's some interesting things here that I think we got to chop up. Uh, all that and more. Why the schedule is a new coach's best friend. Coming up on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what is going on, my friends? Uh, welcome to Locked On Badgers. I am your host, Ryan Herrings. As always, Locked On Badgers is free for you, your team, every single day. Just continue to build that Badger community. Really appreciate everybody tuning in. Today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Let's get into it. So, uh, Big Ten Conference released their conference schedules, and this is the Wisconsin Badgers kind of have a big final present under the Christmas tree before the Big Ten just goes nuclear and the divisions go away. USC gets here, UCLA gets here. They probably go into some type of pod format. Uh, we're going to talk about that on a different show, like what the what the Big Ten conference is going to look like with the addition of the Pac-12 teams and and more potentially. But we have one more year. We have one more run with the Big Ten West and the Big Ten East. And it's going to be set up in a way for the Badgers to potentially go out as Big Ten West champions, just like they came in, right? And this schedule sets up pretty well for them, to be completely honest. Not And not just for, quite frankly, for a Big Ten West title, but it sets up pretty well if some of the younger pieces, which we're going to talk about coming up, you know, coalesce. This team could be pretty special given some of the young talent excuse me, on the roster, oh, excuse me, and the schedule that is in front of them. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to get in right into it. I'm going to put it up here so everybody's watching, at least on YouTube, can kind of see the schedule as it scrolls by. But I'm also going to talk about it. So if you're listening on the pod, no worries. You're not going to miss anything. So out of conference, season starts with Buffalo at Washington State, then Georgia Southern. There's your out of conference games. Okay, so let's start there. Buffalo is a solid MAC team, a, a pretty good MAC team, actually. A winning record. They come to Madison. Listen, Wisconsin is going to be a sizable favorite there. Then they have to go to Washington State, out, out to Bowman. And that's a team that beat them this year, obviously in Madison. But Cam Ward, Washington State's quarterback, could be gone. And, and again, quite frankly, this team, this Wisconsin team, was so disjointed at the beginning of the year that we all know what happened, right? Paul Christ ended up getting fired. So this was not a healthy, healthy Wisconsin team, and that probably won't be the same Washington State team next year. And then you play Georgia Southern to wrap up the out-of-conference games. Georgia Southern is a solid Sun Belt team, a mid-tier Sun Belt team. Um, but there's nothing there that should really scare you as a Badgers fan. Then you go to Purdue, a team Wisconsin has owned. Aiden O'Connell will be gone. Not that Aiden O'Connell – maybe that's not a – maybe for Badger fans, we would like Aiden O'Connell to stay because he seems to do pretty well against a lot of teams except for Wisconsin. But Aiden O'Connell will be gone. Who knows what Purdue is going to look like. But that's, again, a team that Wisconsin's owned. Wisconsin's going to be favored in that game. And then you go into a bye. You know, I don't love this – the where the buy is slotted for Wisconsin. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit here. I think that's too early, but there's also a very good chance you are 4 0 going into that buy. Again, non conference, right? Buffalo, um, Washington State, Georgia Southern, and then a game at Purdue. That's a that's a really nice stretch to ease into. So um, then you have the buy coming out of the buy. You have Rutgers, who hasn't looked that good this year, one and three in conference. You have Iowa at home and Iowa has the worst offense in power five, and there's no optimism. There's no hope, by the way, um, that they fire their offensive coordinator because we all know who his dad is, right? So Iowa's probably not going to be dramatically better. Then you go to Illinois, right? That's That could be tricky for sure with what Bielema has been doing. Illinois whomped us this year. Again, though, that was a wounded Badger team. And Tommy DeVito will probably be gone for Illinois. We'll see what they look like. I'm certainly not going to chalk that up as an auto win by any stretch. Um, and then you were home against Ohio State, obviously a tough one there. And you finish up with a road game at Indiana, home Northwestern, home Nebraska at Minnesota. So let me break this down a little bit. Um, let's start here. Uh, the crossovers. Ever since the, the Big Ten West and East got started, everybody focuses on the crossovers, especially from the Big Ten West. The East doesn't really care. But from the Big Ten West standpoint, everybody focuses on the crossovers, right? Because you got those three those three giants in the East. You have Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State. And obviously one, it stands above the other two, but they're still all. When you see those on the schedule, you circle them. Big Ten did an interesting thing this year. Every Big Ten West team has one tough crossover. That's it, right? Wisconsin and Purdue play Ohio State. Um, 
Northwestern, Iowa, and Illinois play Penn State. Nebraska and Minnesota play Michigan. So it, it, they did a good job of really evening this out. There's no teams in the West that that'll play a Penn State and Michigan in the same year, which Wisconsin has done, right? There's no teams in the, the Big Ten West that won't play any of those teams. So crossovers are relatively equal. Now, obviously, you would rather play Penn State than Ohio State. You'd probably rather play Michigan than Ohio State. But every every team in the West has one tough crossover. So to me, that's that equals out a little bit. And Wisconsin has the fortune, good fortune, of getting Ohio State at home. Like so. By the way, that Ohio State game, I put this on Twitter as well, but I'm, I want to mention it here. I want to take a second to talk about it here. That Ohio State game on October 28th of next year in Madison, not in November, in October, had better not be a noon kickoff. I am sorry. I will riot if we have gone and done night games in very recent years uh, on the road against Ohio State, Michigan, uh, against Penn State, against Iowa. It is high time that we get Ohio State at night again in Madison. Um, yeah, that and that would be such an epic environment, right? Because up to that point, we talked about Wisconsin's schedule. Wisconsin, if they put it together, is going to come into that team with one loss or potentially even undefeated. Ohio State's going to be Ohio State. That could be a marquee matchup at night in Madison. What an opportunity. Um, they better not put that. That better not be this big noon kickoff nonsense. It That had better be at least at least a 2.30 kick. So that's my take on there. I'm going to be so annoyed if that's a, an early game because Wisconsin deserves better. And quite frankly, Wisconsin fans deserve better. They deserve a prime time, big time night environment game. And our recruiting department would love to work with that too, by the way. So that's that's kind of the bulk of the schedule. Let's talk about a few more of the things that caught my eye. Um, we do have, I mentioned the bye week. I want to dive into that a little bit more. I don't love the placement of it. It's early. Right, it's week five. Um, it is the earliest bye week in the Big Ten West. By the way, it's the earliest bye week in the Big Ten West by two weeks. There's no Big Ten West team with a, a week five bye except Wisconsin. There's no Big Ten West team with a week six bye. The earliest that next bye is week seven. So for whatever reason, Wisconsin is just a couple weeks early on the bye. <clears throat> it is what it is. It's not going to kill the season, but I, you would like that to be a little later. Um the toughest three game stretch. I went through this and I tried to pick out my toughest three great three game stretch for Wisconsin. All right. So here it is home game against Iowa. We talked about Iowa. Listen, that's not incredibly daunting, but I can tell you this, when you start stacking up tough physical games and you start getting beat up a little bit, I was going to at least still beat you up a little bit, right? They're a physical team. The defense should be good. The offense can't be worse. Shrug shoulders. I don't know. It can't, it shouldn't be, but the defense will be tough. They'll try to run the ball. They'll be physical. And then after that Iowa game, you go to Illinois, right? Another team that Brett Bielema is building into a physical, want to run the ball. So you're going to have a couple games there in a row where you're going to get beat up. And then you come home to play Ohio State. That's a tough stretch, right? Playing Iowa, <clears throat> going to Illinois if Brett Bielema continues to build this thing. And then you follow it up with Ohio State. That is the toughest stretch of the season, in my opinion. But even that's not crazy. Like, it's not like you're playing Michigan, Iowa, and then Ohio State. Like, you have one marquee team in there. You have one marquee game on the entire schedule. Um, again, the out-of-conference isn't crazy. And the Big Ten, you look at some of the teams on the schedule that they're playing. You know, Northwestern has been terrible this year. Nebraska, we we all saw what happened there. Who knows what they have? Iowa has been a mess. They just waxed Purdue. They waxed Northwestern. Um, you have Illinois. Indiana's not been good this year. Like, guys, listen. Everybody, this could be, again, it's the optimistic fan inside of me, right? All of it could fall apart. We could lose to Washington State and Illinois again. I don't know. But the optimistic fan inside of me sees a roadmap to win the Big Ten West in the last year of the Big Ten West and go to a Big Ten title game. I'm excited for it. I love the schedule. It's super manageable for Wisconsin. Uh, coming up next, we're going to talk about, is this a new coach's best friend, right? Is this um, basically a layup? for a new coach coming into Wisconsin. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers, but first, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Sweat Block. I've talked to you before about my friend Tony. You know, had perspiration issues. You know, he used to get so sweaty that we replaced the word sweaty with Tony in our vernacular. So I would always be like, oh, when I'm playing basketball, I'd be like, oh, I'm getting on Tony. You know, you couldn't guard him in the post. You'd slide off him. And he's just, you know, it, it really impacted his social life, his personal life. And Sweatblock solved all that for Tony. It, it kept him from getting all Tony. Uh, Sweatblock gives you the confidence to wear what you want without embarrassing underarm sweat. 
Uh, the sweat block, the sweat block wipes, sorry, were featured and tested on the Rachel Ray show with firefighters. And listen, if firefighters can pass that test, I guarantee you most of us aren't working that hard. It's going to work for us if it works for them. If you or someone you love is experiencing uh, ex embarrassing sweat or odor, try sweat block. Save 20% with promo code locked on at sweatblock.com. Also available on Amazon. Um, thank you for making Locked On Badgers your first listen every day. Really do appreciate it. When you're done here, go check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insight only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. <clears throat> I want to thank everyone again uh, just tuning in, listening to the show. I uh, really do appreciate it. We're going to take off the scheduling ticker, and let's keep talking. So, I wanted to talk about, um, we're obviously have a new full-time head coach next year, whether it's taking the interim tag off Jim Leonard, which is far and away the most likely scenario at this point, or it's bringing someone else in. Either way, what, especially for coming into a winning program, a program with tradition, a program with pedigree, which Wisconsin checks every single one of those boxes, right? What does a new coach have to do coming in right away? They have to establish that, you know, the program is on the right track, right? It matters. Suddenly, <clears throat> nationally and um from a recruiting standpoint wisconsin looks a little vulnerable right um it, this program has had a few down years they fired their head coach what's going on there is that thing going to fall off the rails well if you come in and you bang out a great season right away as a new coach you're even if it's kind of propped up by a shallow schedule right even if it's propped up by a bad non-conference slate it doesn't really matter you're able to sell instant results you're able to win right away which at a school like Wisconsin matters so much because that's all we've done in, for a long time is win games. So coming in, setting that right away, being that coach to, to get Wisconsin, quote unquote, back on the right track. Now you can build hype in the program. You can recruit to it, you know, and that all leads into kind of the point I was making earlier. There's, there's a very real chance here that October 28th, Ohio state game next year with a new coach who's built uh, a lot of program momentum coming into that. You, Wisconsin might be undefeated or maybe they have one loss coming into that Ohio State game. And suddenly you have, it looks on the outside, it looks maybe from a recruit standpoint that, you know, those, those troubles at Wisconsin were just a speed bump. They were just like a little pothole and now you're over it and you're crushing it. And Wisconsin is right back on track. That's why this new schedule or this schedule with a new head coach is so important because it's, it's so manageable. You're not bringing in Jim Leonard or someone else and you're instantly playing that schedule, you know, from, uh, a year ago when you had Notre Dame and you had Penn State and you had Michigan and, you know, you could easily start off 0-3. And then even if the new coaches, whoever that is, again, it's probably Jim Leonard, let's be honest. But even if the new coach is really doing yeoman's work and, and crushing it, starting 0-3 under a new regime to start a season, it's tough. It, it would really impact momentum. It would impact recruiting. And it would allow for a narrative to develop that Wisconsin shouldn't have fired Paul Christ. Right. It would allow for a narrative that uh, Jim Leonard or whoever it is. Again, I'm saying Jim Leonard. We don't know, but he's not the guy. And now instead of that, instead of opening up with a gauntlet, instead of having a really tough schedule, you have, you know, Georgia Southern, you have Buffalo, you have oh, an away game against Washington State, Purdue. Your crossovers are Rutgers in Indiana plus Ohio State. You know, it, it's just it really provides a launching platform for a new coach to come in win a bunch of games look really good and be able to sell that instant success into recruiting because again we're coming off a recruiting cycle last year that wasn't very good a recruiting cycle this year that's probably not going to be very good we're going to do some more shows on it uh, but next year's recruiting cycle is incredibly important right? It's a deep in-state class. There's a couple blue chip prospects we've talked about. Uh, Donovan Harbor is obviously at the top of that. You know, you have to have a good year next year. You have to be able to sell the program next year because you can't have three straight recruiting classes that are subpar, right? And that's why, again, it, it feels like a great opportunity this schedule does. And we're going to talk about some of the youth in the program coming up, but it feels like a great opportunity with this schedule to finish off the Big Ten West with a great season, to finish off the Big Ten West by putting another Big Ten West uh, division championship kind of in the back pocket, go play probably Ohio State and for for another Big Ten title. But it's really that that opportunity is all there with the schedule, and it's going to set up a, a new coach for, with with a great spot where they can really do that, execute it. So that's why I'm so excited about it. 
Let me know in the comments. Obviously, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself. There's a lot of this season to play out. We don't know how all these teams are going to look next year. But I definitely, you know, historically, you can look at these teams. You can look at Wisconsin. You can assume Jim Leonard's going to be head coach. And if all of those things kind of historically track, Wisconsin's going to be favored in every game next year except for Ohio State and maybe Washington State, Illinois. But they're probably going to be favored in those as well. Wisconsin is just a better program than those schools. And outside of this kind of speed bump, I think I think it can get right back on track. And I think that schedule is going to be a, play a really big part in it. Let me know in the comments. Again, I'm not trying to – I'm not here for the comments that are like, ah, oh, you know, you were so optimistic this year. I was. I was wrong. <laughs> um, and I'm not here really – like for the comments that are like, ah, oh, don't worry about this season. This season's not over. Focus on this one. We can do both. Like we can focus on this year, but we can take a, an episode and look um, a year down the road and say – Boy, next year really could be that season. That could be that special year. Um, and we're going to talk about why it might be that special year with some of the youth on the team coming up next on Locked On Badgers. But first, a word from our sponsors. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Locked On Badgers, um, continuing to join the show, continuing to build the community. Join the Discord if you want. Uh, we do free giveaways on the Discord. We have some really awesome, um, let's see, we've done Team Ray DK autographs. We've done boxes of cards we've done gift cards to fanatics so you can buy badger sway we've done uh these cool coasters that have like badger great badger plays sketched on them in slate and they're incredible um it's just a thank you it's a thank you to everyone who supports the show so if you want to join the discord we'll put the link up um but it's a great way just to join another community of badger fans and it's a great way for me to say thank you for supporting the show so really do appreciate everybody who's listening um let's talk about the youth on this team really quick and we haven't spent a ton of time talking about the youth in terms of what it could look like next year, right? But now we've seen the schedule. It's super manageable. And now let's look at this team, right? Graham Mertz is a junior. So again, I don't want to make any, I'm going to just assume, I'm going to take the transfer portal out of this for a second because anybody could realistically transfer at this point. Like that's just the reality, reality we live in. But Mertz should be back, right? And he's playing great. The last, especially under Jim Leonard, he's been playing incredible. Uh, Mertz is going to come back as one of the most experienced quarterbacks in the Big Ten. Braylon Allen's coming back as a, as a junior, right? This entire young receiving group that we are just over the moon with that have, that have looked incredible is coming back. And not only that, you're adding in Tommy McIntosh. You're adding in uh, Vinny Anthony with a bigger role. <clears throat> you're adding in uh, Brooks as maybe a bigger, more physical possession receiver. They should be really good. Already, you're looking at this offense. Now, let's, let's look at the offensive line. Joe Tippman could come back. And then you have Jack Nelson. You have Riley Mallman, Trey Wedding. You have all of these incredibly young, talented pieces, right? No, uh, Nolan Rucci. Um, you have all those players will be coming to age with Bob Bosted with another year. This entire offense is stacked. The tight end room is young. I mean, it's been injury prone, but it's young. You're getting a lot of those guys back. The entire offense is coming back, right? And with that schedule and this offense coming back with the receiving group, with the way Graham Mertz has played with the way Braylon Allen is um, I'm telling you, this could be a really special offense with another year of growth. And you're also going to allow them coming into next year, whoever the offensive coordinator is. That's another question we have that we obviously can't answer, but whoever that offensive coordinator is, he's going to be coming into a system with an established quarterback, one of the best running backs in the country, one of the best receiving groups Wisconsin has had in a while, and an offensive line full of dudes who are four and five stars who have been in the program for a couple of years at this point. You're telling me that's not a recipe for potentially a really big season against the schedule we just talked about with maybe one really good team on it, Ohio State? I'm telling you, like, there's a lot there. Now, defense is a little more dicey, to, in my opinion, right? On the defense line, you're losing Keanu Benton, and that that dude's irreplaceable. He's, he's like Leo Chanel uh, on, on last year's team. Like, you, you can put another inside linebacker there, but you're not going to replace Leo Chanel. They'll put another defensive tackle there next year, but you're not going to replace Keanu Benton. And I'm not sure who that defensive tackle would be yet. Uh, maybe it's Curtis Neal stepping into a bigger role. A lot of time to speculate on that. Um, the defensive ends, for the most part, will be back. Most of the linebackers will be back, but certainly Nick Herbig, we we don't know his future. Uh, I think the goal the entire year has been to go pro. Um, so we'll see there. The secondary's got a lot, a lot of young pieces, but they're also going to be losing several of the grad transfers. Torchio um, is probably gone. So there's there's more question marks on defense, but 
I would say this. I'm I'm super on the safety group next year. I think it'd be Wohler and Kamoe Latou. I like a lot of the young corners. The young defensive linemen edge rushers are going to be juniors and sophomores, so they should be ready to go. All in all, we are going to have to find a punter, by the way. Vuj, Vuj is awesome. Um, but all in all, you're going to have a team coming back with a ton of key pieces, a ton of experience, a lot of talent. Um, those two really good recruiting classes that Paul Christ and his recruiting group uh, strung together are going to be matured and you're going to be playing a schedule that is really manageable all this lines up for a new coach probably again jim leonard to take the reins and really instantly build some momentum with this program heading into what's going to be a much different big 10 uh the following year as obviously some pac 12 teams come in and the schedules get blown up and the big 10 west is gone um so that's what i wanted to talk about today let me know in the comments if you think the schedule is as manageable as I do, if I'm kind of just getting maybe ahead of my skis a little bit, totally possible. Um, but I think it's interesting. I think this is one of the more, uh, one of the easier schedules for Wisconsin to, to go through that I've seen in a while. And I think it's going to coincide with a really experienced, talented team coming back. So I'm excited for it. Oh, excuse me. I'm excited for it. I'm ready for it. Um, certainly not, certainly a lot of this season to go. I'm excited for that too. Um, but we'll have to see how it plays out. Big 10 schedule release today. Thank you, everybody, for listening to Lockdown Badgers, making it one of your first listens every day. Really, really do appreciate it. When you're done here, go check out Lockdown Sports today, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Thanks, guys. On Wisconsin.